In this video, we are going to talk about topic stress strain diagram, limiting our discussion to traditional materials that is steel and concrete. Firstly, what is a stress strain diagram? This diagram is a characteristic of a particular material being tested and conveys important information about the mechanical properties and types of behavior. So, what are the mechanical properties that we obtain from a stress strain diagram? Some of them are listed below. Uh, if it's concrete, we can obtain compressive strength from a stress strain diagram. If it's steel, we can obtain tensile strength, yield strength, and modulus of elasticity. You can also get an idea of how the material is behaving by just looking at the stress strain diagram. Is it behaving in a ductile manner or a brittle manner, or is it tough as compared to other material? Uh, you can get all these sorts of ideas just by looking at the stress strain diagram. So this is the stress strain diagram for structural steel or mild steel. So how do we obtain this diagram? When we apply a tensile load to a steel bar under a UTM machine, then we obtain this diagram. So at first, when the load is zero, the strain is going to be zero. On x-axis we have a strain and on y-axis we have a stress. So when the load is zero, the strain is going to be zero and the stress is consequently going to be zero. So as we increase the load, to a point of rupture, we have certain important points and regions that need to be discussed here. So from zero point to a point, we have linear region and the corresponding y ordinate is called the proportional limit. So if you apply a load in such a way that the stress produced in the body is below the proportional limit, then it's going to behave in a, a linear manner. That is stress is directly proportional to strain. If we apply a load in this region over here and then we unload unload the material it's going to return to its original position. After a point if we if the uh, stress in the body is exceeded beyond the proportional limit then the material will behave in a non-linear manner. That is stress is not going to be proportional to strain and after B point we can see that over here that under a constant stress there are large permanent strains there's no change in stress but there is large change in deformation that is occurring over here so this region this region over here is called perfectly plasticity or yielding that is the yielding region after C point strain hardening occurs the material is getting stronger due to crystalline uh, changes in the structure. It provides uh, more resistance to deformation. From C to D, we can see over here that there is significant increase in the slope of the stress strain curve. That also indicates that uh, the material is getting stronger. And after the necking occurs, so what is necking? So when you apply tensile load to a structural bar, then after a D point, there, there is a certain portion of the steel bar that gets removed and the cross section over here is reduced. So this is called necking. So at E point finally rupture occurs. So let's say you want to find the modulus of elasticity uh, of the structural steel. How are you going to do that? So the slope of the line from 0 to A would give you the modulus of elasticity of the steel. If you calculate the slope of this line from here to here, then then you, then you are going to obtain the modulus of elasticity of structural steel. You might see stress strain diagram. After D point, there is a dashed line over here, and it goes something like this. It's the same up till here, but after D point, it instead of going down it goes up so this strain diagram is called true stress strain diagram whereas this over here is called engineering stress strain diagram so in this diagram when we when you calculate the stress 
you are going to take the reduced area due to necking so we know that sigma is equal to f over a when you take the reduced area the stress increases so that's why when we consider a reduction in the area the stress increases and the true stress strain diagram looks something like this whereas engineering stress strain diagram we do not uh, take into consideration the uh, reduced area due to uh, some portion of the bar that is ripped off to distinguish between linear and non-linear behavior let's assume two stress strain curve uh, of two materials drawn on a single graph so the first material over here uh, that is drawn by red pen uh, indicates that the material is behaving in a linear manner so in this case stress is directly proportional to strain and it obeys Hooke's law whereas the second material uh, indicates that the stress is not proportional to strain it's not proportional to strain so one more point you need to remember that material can behave in a linear elastic manner or it can also behave in non-linear elastic manner that is if you load the material and when you unload it it will return to its original position it doesn't matter whether it's uh, linear or no non-linear you might see stress strain diagram uh, that shows elastic deformation and plastic deformation on, on x-axis so what does elastic and plastic deformation mean so those deformations which are recoverable uh, after you remove the load are called elastic deformation and those which are irrecoverable are called plastic deformation for instance if you apply a load and then your stress strain diagram follows this path over here and if you unload the material then it's going to return to this position over here there will be zero strength now if you keep on increasing the load till such an extent that it passes this point then what happens if you if now you unload it what happens it unloads in such a way that is parallel to the slope of this line you need to remember this point when you unload a material after the elastic region this line over here will be parallel to this line so how do you measure modulus of velocity from a stress strain curve so let's say this is the stress strain curve for material 1 and this one is for material 2 material 1 material 2 so if you want to measure the modulus of elasticity for this material or here material 1 then you just need to calculate the slope of this line the slope of line OA so how are we going to calculate slope of line OA we know that slope is equal to 10 into theta let's say this is theta 1 over here so this would be equal to E1 that is the slope for the material 1 for slope of the material 2 or the modulus velocity for material 2 this would be equal to let's assume that this is theta 2 and this would be equal to theta 2 so which one of them is greater obviously this one over here is greater this will result in a larger value because theta is greater and then theta will result in larger value and E1 is greater then E2 so what does it mean it means that the material 1 is more stiffer than material 2 so let's say let's take a strain, a strain value over here and you can see over here for material 2 for same strain it gives lower stress 
whereas for material one it gives higher stress for the same strain in case of material one the body to produce this amount of strain in the body the body needs to be stressed to this much extent to this much point whereas in whereas in the case of uh, material 2 the body needs to be stressed this much so you can see the importance of modulus of elasticity the higher the modulus of elasticity the more is to for the material the lower the modulus of elasticity the lower uh, it provides resistance uh, to deformation so now we are going to understand how you can differentiate between a ductile and brittle material uh, from a stress strain curve so let's say this is the stress strain curve for first material and this is for second one I'm just assuming it, uh, these curves over here then you can see over here that the curve for the material one provides less strain as, as compared to the curve for the material two so the curve for the material 2 provides large strain. So ductility, if we define ductility, ductility is the property which enables the material to withstand large deformations. So material 2 is behaving in a ductile manner, whereas material 1 is behaving in a brittle manner. So for toughness, we are going to do the same thing. We have a uh, stress strain curve for material 1 and material 2. So toughness is the ability of the material to resist energy load up to fracture. So in case of stress strain diagram, you can just get an idea of toughness by looking at the area under the curve of the diagram. So in the first case, this is the area under the curve for the material 1 and in the second case this is the area the larger the area the more tougher the material so in this case material 2 is more tougher as compared to material 1 Now we are going to draw the stress strain curve for concrete. For that, we are going to apply a compressive load uh, to a certain specification of cylinder having diameter equal to 6 inch and height equal to 12 inch. By the way, this is according to ACI code. If, it's, uh, if it is British code, British standard, then they usually use cube for that, for this purpose. First, you are going to create it and wait 28 days. Then you are going to apply compression test carry out compression test and then you are going to calculate the stress and strain at various points and then you are going to plot this curve over here so at first this curve would behave in a linear manner then afterward this point is going it's going to behave in a non-linear mode so it fails over here and this is the failure strain at this point and according to ACI code this is equal to this is to be in the range 0 0.003 to 0 0.004 and the point where the maximum compressive strength is achieved is over here and the strain corresponding to that stress is equal to 0 0.002 if the building standard change then these values will also change let's say for instance this curve is drawn for 4 ksi of concrete now we are going to draw a stress strain curve for 5 ksi and 6 ksi so for 5 ksi this is going to be something like this and for 6 ksi let me draw it and over here so you can see that as Fc prime increases, the failure strain reduces. We can see that over here. As Fc prime increases, this is 5 ksi, this is 6 ksi, the failure strain reduces. So in one way we can say that 
the stress strength curve for the uh, concrete of 4 ksi is relatively ductile as compared to 5 ksi and 5 ksi is relatively ductile to 6 ksi i'm using the term relatively ductile we know that concrete is a brittle material but if you compare 4 ksi with 5 ksi it's relatively ductile and you can't directly calculate the elastic modulus by just calculating the theta this was only for the that was only for the case where uh, only linear portion existed here also non-linear portion exists so you can't use that concept over here there might be question arising in your mind that why strain is on the axis and why stress is on the y-axis so we know that on x-axis we have independent quantity and on y-axis we have a dependent quantity so if there are strength, strengths produced in the body there will be stress so let's say we have a circular cylinder and we apply a compression load to it then it will have some deformation in it this deformation results in some strain and this strain will consequently result in some stress produced in the body so you need to remember it that if there are strains in the body produced in the body there will be stress then it can't be the other way around if you have any kind of questions or queries related to this topic please write them down in the comment section i will try my level best to answer them thank you